So welcome back. We're going to work a couple of present value and future value problems now. Let's take an example where uh, a company wants to determine the future value of $50,000 invested for five years, compounded annually at an interest rate of 6%. So we know our, we know what our future, um, we know what the present value is. It's $50,000. What we're trying to figure out is the future value in five years. So this is compounding annually. So if we were to walk through this, it's going to be annually at 6%. So using the table, we just say, okay, we've got five years. We want to at 6%, our factor is going to be 1.33. So that's just five years at 6%. <clears throat> so that's the factor. We need to multiply times the principal, which is $50,000. So we take 1.33, whatever, 823 is the number actually you get from the table. We're going to multiply that times $50,000, which gives us a future value. So that $50,000 has actually grown to $66,912 in five years at 6%. So it is increased in value by basically $16,912 over the course of those five years. And that's paying 6% for five years. So what if we flip this around and we want to say, okay, well, what's the not, we're not going to try to figure out what the future value is. Let's figure out what the present value is. What's the value of something today? So let's take an example where we, in the future, we're going to get $73,466, just random number here. So we're going to get that in five years. Um, and let's say I want to, I want a 8% return on this. So how am I going to do this? So in this case, what I don't know is the present value. I know the future value. It's 73,466 um, is the future value in five years. I need to discount that back 8% compounding annually. So if we basically use your present value tables, or you can use your present, the present value of, in your calculator, a lot of times you're just not filling in the present value in the calculator, and then it gives you the present value. So you would put in interest rate periods um, and the future value. And then it would give you the present value. So we have our $73,466, which is the future value. Um, we're going to multiply that times our factor. Uh, if we pulled that from the table, it would basically five years at 8%. It's a factor of basically 0.68. Now, one thing to keep in mind, your future value factors are always going to be less because your present value is always less than the future value when we discount it back because the present value amount dollars is growing into the future just like what we talked about so a future value amount is always larger than the present value because our present value that we're giving up needs to be more than that when we get it in the future back to our basic concepts of time value of money so our factor in this case is 0 0.68 so if we discount back seventy three thousand four hundred sixty six dollars discount it back five years at 8%, we're going to end up with a present value of $50,000. So our present value of $50,000 for five years at 8% is going to grow to 73,466. In this case, we knew what it was going to grow to. We just didn't know how much we were starting with. It happens to just line up perfectly with $50,000. So that is how we, that's basically the calculation or the working through of a present value, uh, problem. So if we have a present value with say multiple sums, this is actually what we're going to call an annuity as we move more into our other problems here. But if we have an annuity, so if you were to work a problem, let's say you're 18 years old, given the following decision by your parents, they will either pay $70,000 right now, or they will give you $20,000 each of the next four years for college. <clears throat> And they'll give this to you at the end of each of the next two years. So this is a tip, actually, this would be an ordinary annuity, uh, as we'll talk about later. So there's our question. There's $70,000 now or $20,000 at the end of the next four years. So the end of this year, the end of year two, the end of year three, end of year four. And the question is, which of these options is better? Which one will you end up with um, uh, essentially more money? And we're going to assume an 8% interest rate compounding annually. That notion is, okay, well, if I had the $70,000 right now, I could say invest it and make 8% for the next four years. Um, or we're going to discount back that $20,000 at 8%. I think there's two ways to kind of think about how to treat that, but that's roughly the idea. So we're, what we're trying to figure out is the decision today. What is the present value of these two different streams of cash flows? 
This is where these present value calculations come in really handy. Which, how do we make that decision? What's a better decision for us given different types of cash flows over different periods of time? This is a, this could be easily translated into a business context. <clears throat> so if we first <coughs> calculate our present values. So our first present value of multiple sums, we're gonna take our present value of the $20,000 so we know the present value of our $70,000. It's $70,000 because we're gonna get that today. So we already know that point. We're just trying to figure out, okay, what's the present value of these four future payments of $20,000 each? So we're gonna discount each one of them back for the number of periods. So the first one is $20,000. We're gonna discount that back one period at 8%. That's gonna give us um, $18,520. That's the value of $20,000 that we're gonna get one year from today if we discount it back at 8%. So the first, payment is worth today is worth 18520 the second payment if we discount it back the factor is going to be 0.857 times 20% this is discounting back $20,000 for two periods two years at 8% that's only worth $17,140 the third payment that we're not going to get for 3 years discount that back we're going to get that equal to that's in present value is $15,880. And the last payment that we won't get for four years, that's only worth in today's dollars, $14,700. So if we take all of those payments, the 18,520, 17,140, 15,880, and the 14,700, add them all together, that gives us a present value of that $20,000, present value of $66,240. Well, that's 66,000. All compared to seventy thousand, those are our two choices. We can either take the twenty thousand dollars payment or payments every year. Or we can take seventy thousand dollars today. Seventy thousand dollars is worth more, is more than sixty six. So we are going to take the money today. That is the better decision. So <clears throat> essentially, what this is saying, there are different ways of looking at this, but what this is saying is, if we took our seventy thousand dollars and just invested it at eight percent, at the end of the period, we would end up with more money. If we took the $70,000 and and then used that to pay for college, we would still end up at the end of the period, we would have paid the $20,000 every year and we'd have leftover money at the end of those four years. Now, we're not calculating it that way, but that is another way of calculating it, another way of thinking about this problem. So that $70,000 is worth more than the 66,000 is worth more than the 66,000 or the worth more than the $20,000 annual payments for four years. So, now there's other there, the other we've calculated the um, shown working through the problem where we don't know the present value and we don't know the future value there's also periods where well problems where you might not know the number of periods or the interest rate well um, if you're using the tables it's a little bit more complicated if you're using your calculator you usually just well don't fill in the number of periods and it tells you the number of periods a lot on a lot of the calculators or the interest rate in the table you just kind of flip things around if you um if you're using say um the future value table well then you're just going to take the you take the future value over the um present value it gives you a factor so if the future value is seventy thousand dollars and the present value is forty seven thousand dollars so you have forty seven thousand dollars growing to seventy thousand dollars if this is an investment scenario our factor would be say 1.46 we find that <clears throat> in the right interest rate um interest rate column and then it tells us our periods alternatively we could go um, the other way, if we say knew the number of periods but not the rate, we just then find the number of um, periods and roll it over until we get to the right factor, and that's how we would work it. So uh, let's take a quick example. So uh, let's say this: a company needs a, a million and seventy thousand dollars for a basic research five years from now. So the company wants to have a million, a little over a million dollars uh, for research in five years. So a big project's coming up there. Want to? save so the company's currently has eight hundred thousand um, dollars and they want to figure out okay well what interest rate do they need to have in the future wouldn't it be nice if we just pick our interest rates anyway uh, the beauty of academic uh, examples so we're trying to calculate the interest rate we know the period we know the present the future values so we take the future value which is a one million seventy thousand dollars over the present value of eight hundred dollars that gives us a factor of say 1.33 okay um, we know the number of periods is five so we're going to a look at our fifth period, go over until we find the factor of 1.33, that means 6%. So we need to make a 6% annual rate um, over the next five years in order for our $800,000 to grow to uh, $1,070,000.
which is actually reasonable. So um, you can use the uh, you can use the uh, let's see. So that was using the future value table. You can use the present value table. So we have eight hundred thousand dollars over the one point seven. You just flip the which which one. You, if you're using the present value table, you just put the present value on top and the future value on the bottom. If you're using the future value, you just flip them. So it should be pretty straightforward. If you're if you calculate something less than one, you need to be in the present value table. If you calculate something greater than one, you need to be in the future value table. And we get the same answer regardless of which angle we come at that from. So that kind of wraps up our, our single sum uh, problems. Next, we're going to be dealing with uh, annuities. Annuities are series of cash flows. So we need to figure out, say, what's the series of cash flows, what's the present value of some series of cash flows or the future value of a series of cash flows. So that's what we'll be doing in the next group. I'm going to take a little break here. We'll come back and we'll work through some annuities, the basic concept, and then the problems. Have a great day. God bless.